Okay, I started by applying one coat of multi-purpose sealer onto this surface. Uh, I'm going to take my sponge now. I'm going to go to the opposite side that the multi-surface sealer is and pick up blue mist. And we're going to base coat the entire surface. I may come back and paint the topper in a different color. But for now, we're just going to base coat the entire surface in. And that's a little bit darker than what I want. So I'm going to get some warm white out that on my sponge a little bit and lighten that just a little bit. I want these to be old kind of antique colors. I put a line here with my ruler to where the, the floor will set. So now I'm just going to tip into a little bit of deep midnight blue and create the floor along here. Now you can you can uh, come back in. We're going to have to apply a second coat so I'm going to have to go over this but you can paint the whole thing with the background color and then come in and apply your scotch tape right there and then add your floor back in. So I'm going to get this dry and I'm going to apply a second coat exactly like I just applied the first coat with my sponge. Okay, let's get ready to start adding some base coats on here. Um, I'm going to use a round brush. I've got a four and a two. I could go down to a one probably in some of these smaller areas. We're going to base in the skin first. Um, wake up your brushes. So get them damp, get them full of water, get them nice and plump want to make them ready to work for you. We're going to go into some natural buff here. And I'm going to see if I'm going to like this color. So her legs will be this color. And this color, I do not know why, but this color is always so thick for me. So we want to try and follow the shape here that we've drawn in. Just fill it in nicely. Add the back leg here. Maybe a little bit of water in my brush. Just down to the top of the shoe there. Okay, so we can still define, we can still see both of the legs there go up here to the face. And she's got a little nose there. We don't really have a whole lot of definition on her face. I'll come back in and, and um, define her ear and her earring later. Okay, I'm going to go to my smaller one for her hands. And we'll have to put two coats on here. I got her thumb a little bit fat there, so when I come in and paint the present, I think I'll just remove some of it real quick. She's got petite little hands here. And then this hand is holding the bag. It won't have a whole lot of detail on here. Okay, so we'll have to apply two coats on there of that color. And um, I think when I apply my second coat, because that is very, very light, I know in the antique, the antique, in the old uh, Christmas cards and things, they did have very pale skin. But I think I'm going to add just a touch. It used to be called flesh tone, but now it's warm beige. I think I might add just a touch of this in here. So this is dry. Let me go ahead and 
put the second coat on. I don't usually base coat in both coats here. And this one is thick too. So I'm just going to brush mix. I'll just do equal amounts. I don't want it to get too dark. make it too much darker but it gave it a little bit more opaqueness here so we won't have to apply so many coats I'll try and cover up my pencil lines here I still feel like I'm going to have to have another coat on her legs. Every time I use these flesh tone colors, I don't know what it is about them, but they just are so thick and they want to dry up so quickly. I don't know if it has something to do with the pigment that's in them or not, but... Okay, the other thing I want to show you, and then the rest of it is just basic base coats. Base coats. We're not going to base in the tree yet, so don't worry about it. Um, actually, we might work on the tree after we do the window, but I want to work on the window first. And go ahead and put the shape of the tree in. So I'm going to tape off with some, some scotch tape here along my edges so I can paint this and keep it straight. We will do the same thing when we paint the frame in. We're just going to paint the whole thing in right now with our blues to get our background. So just tape it with scotch tape. You want to make sure any paint that you're laying it on top of is dry. So we're going to get our deep midnight blue. And we're going to base this in. Just use a flat brush. And I'm going to use another 8 here. I'm going to wake it up. You could go to a 10 if you want. So. this in. This is out the window. I don't have to be super. Could have gone with a much larger brush here, I think. I have a little bit, probably too much water in my brush, so hopefully it's not seeping underneath. some snow white out. I'm going to streak some snow white in here. Paint all over me here. I'm just going to double load. So double loading just means you pick up each color on your brush and then you work it in. And I'm just going to streak this across here. Pick up a little bit more. white. I want to get some illusion of some kind of clouds in the night back there. And just be kind of messy and irregular here. Ooh, 
That's a lot of white. Okay, down here at the very bottom of it, we want a lot more white, or like snow. So we'll just pound some snow up here. We got to put our frame in, so we're not exactly sure. And we'll come back and add some detail snow when we're done. But we'll just have a little bit of snow there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this tape off. side of our window there. So we're going to let that dry. Um, I really think I want to do the tree before I base in this stuff over here because our tree is going to come over everything. So we might have to rebase her hand in. So let me get my brush and my paints for that. All right, before I add in my pine on the tree here, I'm going to just quickly rough in a tree trunk here. And bring it up just a little bit. I'll come back and define and add some definition to that here in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to use a rake brush. This is a quarter inch low Cornell rake brush. I do sell these on my website. I still have some, so I don't know by the time this video comes out if I will still have any or not. So we're going to thin our paint down with some water where it will flow off of our brush nicely. So I've just picked up some water and pulled out some paint and I'm mixing it in there. We want it to flow and that's got way too much paint in my brush. We want it to flow. We want it to be a little bit thin. We want it to come off nicely off of our brush. So I've loaded my brush. I'm going to touch my paper towel. I want to wick out any excess out of it. And then I'm going to come right here underneath the star. I'm going to kind of be on the chisel edge here. And then I'm just going to start. I still have too much water in my brush. I'm going to start pulling out and down. Come all the way to the edge here. Just making a tree shape. And it's not the best tree shape, but we're going to be adding some layers on here. So we're going to do the same over here. going to come over our pattern lines. We can put them back in. A little bit more water in my paint here. Make it flow a little bit easier. This is Black Forest Green. So this, most of this over here on this side we won't see. But um, you can still fill that in. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush off. I'm going to load my second color, which is Festive Green. I tried to pick colors that were more kind of on the older, older side. I don't think this one's going to show up. Let me add a little bit of white to it. I don't want it to get too bright because then our next color won't show up. So we're going to add some of this color. I 
I really love antique things and I love old movies and I love the way they dressed back in those old movies musicals are my old musicals are my favorite I've not ever seen one old musical that I haven't loved my dad really liked the old movies so I think that's kind of what got me going with them There's our second color. We're going to go with one more color. We're going to use it a little bit sparingly. And it's going to be green tea. And I might just lighten it down with some white or warm white, whatever you have on your palette. This is going to be pretty bright, so... I've got my brush mostly straight up and down here. I'm just barely letting it tickle across the surface here. I didn't let it tickle a little bit too much there. But that's okay. We're going to be adding some ornaments in here. And some lights on here. And that's about all we need of that color. So I'm going to go back in and transfer my lines here so I know exactly where they're at. I'm going to cover up a little bit more down here on my tree trunk, I think. That's a fun little Christmas tree there. Alright, I want to work on what's out here in this picture first. So we're going to take some deep midnight blue and a small filbert brush. And I'm just going to base in a few trees out here. I'm just using a four filbert. I tip it up on, on its edge. So I'll put another, another one here. I just put where I'm going to start one. And then I just begin tapping on that at that edge. And then I think I'll put one out here. And then I just get a little bit bigger. I'm kind of try, I try to be loose with it. Now I'm just going to dirty brush into sapphire blue, and we'll put that on here. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush off and go into some gray sky. And I think this will just keep on this edge over here. the light is coming more from that side. And that just kind of gives us our trees back in there. And that's that's all we have to do with that, but I'm going to take a little bit of white and just kind of fluff it in. Like I said, some, a lot of this will be covered up with our curtain and our frame, but we can just add it in there. Okay? Okay, before we put the frame on here, I'm going to tip into some white, and I'm going to remove most of it off of my brush on my palette, and then we're just going to go across like this. We want to create the look of that this is glass back here.
Okay, I've drawn in a little uh, frame in the window here, and I'm going to base it in with some raw sienna. put a frame around the edge so I'm just going to go on the inside of our blue and I'm just using a two round brush here. Good round brushes are so important to have. You need to, to tape it off again, you can tape it off. A thickness right there. And then we'll just come along the I don't know, I don't think I need it again. Come along the top edge here. You're just using the width of the brush for, that's how, how wide the the window paint or the frame around the window is going to be. Just giving easy pressure. Okay. And then you can repeat if you need to. It needs to be just a touch darker in there. Okay, I'm going to tip into some soft black, get it down in the bottle. My paints have been oozing because i got them standing upside down, so every time I open it, I'm getting paint all over me. So if, that, if you store your paints upside down before you uh, squirt any out, just unscrew the lid and let the air go back down in the bottle. Okay, so I'm just going to dirty brush, tip into some soft black and we'll just streak some of that make it look a little bit more like wood we don't need too much detail in this window because uh, it's not the focal point and you could go into a little bit of white if you wanted to put a little bit of I'm going to shade with the soft black right here. Maybe not quite that much, so I'll take some of it off. I'm going to pull it out with the water edge. And then I think we'll go here. a little bit of soft black on my brush. Okay. I think that's all the detail we're going to give to the window frame. Okay, let's create some curtains here. So I'm going to side load with my white. And it's very sheer. I'm going to add a little bit more water in my brush. I want this very soft and sheer. And we're just going to add these curtains. And they'll come down like this. And then you can pick up a little bit more white and add some like, creases in here. And then we'll 
give it a little thickness through here where it's kind of tied back. Try and make them match a little bit. So that's all we're going to do to our window back there. The window's done, so we're not going to worry about it anymore. We are going to move on to the lady over here. Okay, we've based our star in with some cad ye or moon yellow. So I want to shade along the bottom of it with antique gold. Keep my point there. Just bring it up into it just a little bit. And then we'll highlight across the top with some cat yellow. I'm using an angle brush here. If any of you have ever painted with me, you know that I do not normally use angle brushes. But that's such a small little star there. I needed it. I'm going to add a little bit of white, this dirty brush right into some white. And put a little highlight on there. And that should finish up our star there. I think I'll shade underneath it with some of that dark green. sets it up there a little bit better. Maybe just a tad more white on it. And we'll probably put some sparkle on that too. Okay, I'm going to wide angle out. Get a little bit better perspective there. Okay, we're going to work on doing our um, cord for our lights. I've drawn in ornaments on here, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to put that many on there, but um, we'll see. So our cord we're going to base in soft black, so let me give some fresh soft black. We're going to use a liner brush. I'm using a 10-0 liner. We're going to thin our paint down to icky consistency. That just means you dip your brush into water. And it's fully loaded with water. You come to your paint, you pull some paint out, and you thin it down. And add a little bit more water to this because we need it to be inky consistency. I'm going to wash my brush, dry it off, go right here and load. I've got water on my ferrule. I have to get that off or it'll roll down and cause big time issues. So we want it nice and full. I'm going to tip to my paper towel and then we'll have a nice thin brush straight up and down. Unless you want your cord to be extra thick. You can kind of let it go over the edge to give the illusion that it's kind of going around. I'm sure this is not the right direction. But... Ooh, that's really thick right there. I'm going to take a damp brush and take some of that off. Because I don't really want my cord to be that thick. Okay, that looks 
looks much better. So now we need to add some ornaments on there. Okay, before I move on to adding my ornaments, I'm going to apply two coats of Glamour Dust to my star up here. Because I want it to have some blingy bling. So I'll let that coat dry and then I'll apply a second one and that star will just sparkle. Alright, so we're going to put our ornaments on our tree now. And I think we're going to use, I was going to use a green, but I think the green might blend in with the background. I'm not sure here. I'm definitely going to use uh, a red and a blue. So I could use a yellow or an orange or all of the above. start out with my red and these are very simple ornaments to put on you're just going to make a, a little mark there and I want to leave room for my next color so I know I'm going to have blue and I don't know if I'm going to have orange or green or yellow I might have yellow so let's say red yellow blue so I'll put a red one here. We want them to go different directions. Don't have them all be the same. Because, you know, when you put lights on a tree, they're never all going the same direction. But I want these to imitate old the old big bulbs. I'm not going to put one there because our bag is there and we wouldn't see it anyway. So, let me get some cad yellow out. I'll do yellow next. And you can come back and repeat these after they dry. here. Maybe over here, kind of around the corner. And then we want some blue ones on here. So there is our lights on there. And I'll come back and repeat, especially on the yellow one. I want it to be much brighter. Now for our ornaments on here, 
Um, I'm going to paint um, where's my gray? Do I have a gray? Gray? I want silver ornaments on here. I can do silver and gold ornaments. I'm going to undercoat with gray and then come back with a metallic on top or glamour dust. I haven't decided yet. So that's why I haven't decided if I want them all to be gray or if I want them to be or silver if I want them to be silver and gold. So for now I think I'll just paint them I think silver. I want my topper to be silver so I think we'll stick with silver, silver ornaments. So we're just going to base all these in trying to keep them round. I just drew some circles in so you can do the same and put your ornaments wherever you want them to be. But we'll try and keep them all circles. Although I do like those kind of long ornaments. We had those as a kid. Can we put popcorn on our tree. You could put a popcorn instead of lights. You could put a popcorn string on here. Go in and erase our graphite lines when we're done painting this in. Just outlining and filling in. my yellow for sure. And maybe on my red. So I'll do the blue since I'm doing all the others. Okay, let's take some of our metallic paint. I think we'll, we might make them metallic and sparkly. So we're going to use shimmering silver metallics. Or if you just want to put the sparkle on there with the glamour dust, you can do that. I think I'm going to erase my graphite lines first. Any that I can see still on here. Brush eraser shavings away from your paint. You certainly don't want that in your paint. This is just the metallic on here. You'll be able to see that. So pretty. That ornament kind of lost its shape there. If I can 
shake the back. Those are going to be so pretty. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of them painted in. No need to see the repetition here on the video. And I'll be back. Okay, I decided I want my ornaments to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to use the media liquid glass. Get it down to the tip here. Okay, got it going here. Um, so I'm just going to squirt some of this out on each one of my bulbs. I want them to stand out. Just a little dot. This will dry clear. We'll see the color underneath, but it will look like glass. Now, I I do recommend that if you're going to use this product, that you use it after you have varnished. But if you put it on before, no need to worry. You can just squirt some out on your palette, take a paintbrush, and brush some over it. you to see how clear this will dry. It will be raised. It is just a wonderful product for getting raised effects. You could draw on your surface with this and then come back and paint. It does take quite a bit of pressure to squeeze this bottle. So if you have weakness in your hands, although that one I did not need to do because that one is behind the purse. So I'll take that off. Didn't realize I painted that one there. Okay, so that will dry clear and raised and it will be beautiful. Now I'm trying to decide, I, even though th these are silver, I still think I want them to have some bling on top of them. So I'm going to put some glamour dust on them. So it'll be extra blingy. Try and get all the way out to the edge. I don't want to leave any part of it that doesn't have glamour dust on it. Now you don't have to add, have to add glamour dust to these and you don't have to add the metallic if you want to just add just the glamour dust or just the metallic. Um, but I think you need one or the other. And I might go up in the window Put a little bit of glamour dust in the snow outside the window. Just a little bit of sparkle back in there. We can't even see our trees now that we put the curtains in. But we know they're out there. Okay, I'll let that dry and see if I want to add a second coat of the glamour dust on there, which I probably will because there's a couple of them I didn't get all the way to the edges, so I want to make sure that I get the glamour dust all the way to the edges. Okay, while our tree dries, uh, we're going to go work on our lady here. So we're going to take some warm beige and we're going to shade. We want to separate our legs here. I want to give her a little ankle. Stuck my hand in my paint on my tree. I'm going to have to fix that. So it's just like a little V right here. Which you can't even hardly see on the camera. Okay. I'm going to go back to my tree here because I feel like these ornaments need some weight on them. So I'm going to use some deep midnight blue and shade along the bottom. Make 
sure you stay off of your bulbs, your lights, because you don't want to mess up your, if you put your liquid glass on there, you don't want to put your hand through it like I did just a minute ago. lose all of our metallic on here. So try to keep it at the bottom where it doesn't completely fill in all of your ornament, you know, just a little a little bit at the bottom. Take a small little brush, a liner, I think, and give it just a little highlight with some white. I don't know how much of this we'll see. Probably won't see that at all because that's. I just feel like the ornaments needed a little bit more detail. Okay, now we can let that dry and put our two coats of glamour dust on there and I think those are going to look just great. Okay, I'm going to try and continue on with her without getting my hand into my bulbs over here. So we're going to also shade underneath or right here where her leg. This one back here will be a little bit darker. So she'll have a little bit of shadow underneath her dress there. And then on her hands, we're going to go next to her. I need to erase this line here. And then right here, where it's going to be folded, we'll give her a little bit of shading back here on the back side of her hand. Not going to really have any detail on that hand there. Then on this hand, we're going to shade next to her cuff and a little bit out here on this outer edge. Just a little bit. This is subtle stuff here on her. Okay. Then we'll go on her neck back here. And her ear is going to be here. So we can kind of give the look of, of that there. And then we'll shade around her. We'll put a little bit where the eye would be. And mouth. We'll go a little bit on the front of the neck there. So it's just very subtle stuff. We're not going to see huge changes here. So I do want to add a little bit of highlight with some white. So I'm going to put some down the front of her leg. Put 
some on the tip of our hand here. On our thumb. And then coming around onto this finger. To get that present painted in there. Be very careful going around her thumb, but we can paint it back in if we get lost in there. And then I want to do her nose. subtleties there. Those are just small little highlights. Okay, I want to put the smallest amount of red on her cheek here. So, let me zoom in a little bit. I have this teeny tiny little mop brush. It is a size 2. It's a Sharf mini mop. I have a whole set of these and this is the smallest one in the set. I'm going to use it dry. I'm going to take some Santa Red on it, and then I'm going to rub it off on a dry paper towel. I want to get as much of the paint off of this as possible. And I just want to put a little bit Just a touch more than what I want. I mean, you're going to leave the smallest amount on there, so. Okay, then I'm going to take my liner brush with some of that Santa Red, and I'm going to put it where her mouth would be. Then we're going to take, keep with the liner brush and take some soft black. And her eyebrow is up here. Okay, not a lot of detail. This is just, we don't want tons on here. And she's kind of looking down at the gift in her hand. So we can create a closed eye here. Zoom in so maybe you can see that a little bit better. So I just did a little line and put some lashes on there. Like she's looking down at the gift in her hand. Okay, her lips are a little pushed out there, but um, that's okay. So I think we're done with the skin part there. Let me wide angle back out. She's looking pretty good, I think. I think we're going to finish this present in her hand, in the bag. And then we'll work on the rest of her. Okay, I want to work on this present here. And we've got it base coated with the sapphire. So now I'm going to take a little bit of deep midnight blue. And I'm going to mix a tiny little bit of soft black in with it. Just barely tip the toe of your brush into some soft black. I'm going to wipe the soft black off on my palette paper and then what's left in my brush I'm going to blend. So I'll darken up that blue a little bit. We want to go around her hand here. A little bit more paint on my brush. These little brushes just do not hold paint, so constantly going back for more. And then we'll go a little bit on this edge here. Okay, and then we're going to highlight. Highlight with uh, white and a tiny little bit of sapphire. 
Just brush blend them where you get a color you like. My shading color just about covered up too much of my gift there. Okay, so our uh, bow we're going to do with, um, I think I'll use warm white on here. It's a little bit more of a darker color. We're just going to make a simple little bow here. We don't need tons of detail. So, um, so just use a small round brush. We're going to put a string ribbon on this one, so it's going to go across here. And over the side, I'm going to angle it. Okay, and I didn't get that very straight because I had my thing turned. So we'll just widen that up a little bit. And then we'll just put a loop and a tail. And a part of a loop here. And that's really all we need to do with that. It's, it's a very simple little gift that she has in her hand. There's nothing spectacular there. Okay, I'm going to work on the bag next. Um, let's see. We're going to base it with warm white. So while I have my warm white here, I'm just going to go ahead and paint it in. So the whole bag will be warm white. And we'll take a couple of coats on here to cover up all the background stuff. this dry. And then I'll put a second coat on there. The presents inside the bag, one is green tea and one is antique gold. So we'll go ahead and start our base coats on those. So green tea here. A little bit of a transparent color. And then antique gold on the other one. This doesn't take very much paint for these presents. And again, we'll need two, maybe three coats to cover up. Okay. So while I'm letting that dry before I get my second coats on there, I'm going to go up on her hair. Might as well base something else in while we're letting that dry. Her hair I'm going to base in with some moon yellow. Don't get it on her face or her neck. Try to stay. Oops, wrong color. Try to stay in the lines. I do want to cover up my lines, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it out just enough to cover those graphite lines. Okay, so we'll let that dry. All right, so. Um, we can go ahead and base, base coat all of our presents in down here. Um, I'm going to go off camera to do that because it's just simple base coating. And while I'm at it, I'm going to base coat her. Well, before I base coat her dress in, I want to put some um, 
lacy stuff kind of going on underneath her dress. So we're going to side load our angle brush. And my instructions will have this um, kind of in each category. So when we move to her dress, the first thing we will do is her lace down here. And then we'll do the dress, the cuffs, and the belt, and the shoes. So I want to create a um, very soft, just lacy stuff coming off of her dress here. So you don't have very much paint on your on your brush. We've got water to kind of thin it down. And we're just wiggling the brush, keeping the white side out away from the dress and the water edge close to the dress. And it's just a wiggle. So nothing super fancy there. Okay, I might come back and add just a tiny bit of that was warm white. And I might add just a little bit of snow white on the outer edge to make it stand out just a little bit. This is just a hit and miss thing. Just taking the tip of that brush and tipping the edge. Still have very little paint in my brush. Okay, so now that little lacy stuff shows up a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to go in and fill in base coat all my, my presents in and get the two coats on this. All right, I got the remainder of my base coats on. So the white here, our cuffs and collar, is gray sky. I'll go over this one one more time. The topper is gray sky. The shoes and the belt are black. And the dress is Santa red. Her hair, I got the second coat on her hair. So I wanna work on her dress now. And then we'll go over it her dress and her hair and then we'll finish these presents up and then add any details on here. We'll go up and do some stuff on the top or two. So on her dress I want to shade with Rookwood Red. I didn't want the base coats to be on camera because you know most everybody knows how to do their base coats. If you don't add a little bit of water to your paint as you're brushing on. Use a brush appropriate size for the area that you are painting so you have less brush strokes. Let it dry. Um, another uh, coat on there with a little bit of water and then you should have a nice smooth area to paint on. If you're getting ridges and things like that then uh, your paint is too thick so you just need to add a little bit of water. So I'm going to spritz my palette I always spritz water on the side of my palette with just a misting bottle, travel mister. Because when I float, I want to pick up clean water on the opposite edge that I have paint. And I'm going to work it in just like I work the paint in. So we're going to shade on each side of our little folds here. With some Rookwood Red. Using an angle brush, which is not my favorite brush to use. So, just everywhere that we have a line, I think on these two here. I'm going to go maybe on the back side of them. Okay, then we're going to shade around her arm here. On this arm. I'm going to be 
up on the toe a little bit here because that's a tight area right there. Okay, and we'll go next to these little lines here, more up on the toe. We'll go next to the cuff, around this elbow and next to the cuff. And next to the cuff here. And we'll go up here next to the collar. And we'll do above and below her waist. Now I just drew my detail lines in with a, a dressmaker's pencil, which I sell these on my website. My favorite pencil. And it will go away with paint or water, so we don't have to worry about it getting set in there. This is a little bit of a turned up place here. So I just want to get that dark right there. Okay, so let's add some highlights on here now. Okay, let's add some highlights. We're going to add it with that orange. And my orange is not wanting to shake up very well. It's very thin. So we'll go on the opposite sides here. Sure, I remove that white line. Walk this out just a little bit. Bring this out just a little bit. Oops. Opposite side back here. Cat orange is one of those transparent colors, so it won't turn our dress orange. Okay, we'll go along her back here. Pull it in. arm back here. And right here. And then we have these wrinkles here. So we'll go, oops, too much paint there. I want to go along the bottom edge of her dress as well. Too much paint.
because this is such a sheer paint, we're gonna we should be using pretty much straight paint, just a tiny bit of water on our water edge of our brush so we can pull it where we want it. Just a couple of these. Just brightening. A little bit on its outside edge of that arm. Side the line here, so I'm just going to erase that away. This is my little tri eraser. I also sell these on my website. Love these. I cannot paint without them because if I make a little boo boo, as long as the paint hasn't cured, I can erase it off of there. Okay. Okay, this is my go to bright highlight when I'm painting red, especially Christmas. It is a neon, fiery red. It's stuck. So we're gonna put a little bit of this out and we're just gonna take it over our highlights. And I know when we first put it on here, so you're gonna go, whoa, that is bright stuff. Sure, where the shading on this one went. Try and add it back in there. So a little bit on this front edge here. And we'll just kind of come down our highlights. Walk that out. Smooth that out a bit. I have to come back and touch that one up. Oop. That's a lot of paint. don't want to get this in your background. Because it 
it will look super bright pink on your background. I'm not being too neat about this float. I'm just kind of putting some on there. Go a little bit along the edge here. that out. Man, I just love this. Okay, one more thing to the dress here. We might add a brighter highlight here and there. This is cherry red, my favorite glazing color for red. I've got mostly water here, so I'm just tinting the paint, tinting the water with the paint. Touch my paper towel to get the excess out. Have to make sure this is dry. And we're just going to glaze over our dress. Be very careful doing this. Reds are very hard to clean up off of your background, so you don't want to get outside your edges. It's just a tint of color. But look how it makes the dress pop. Just love glazing over my reds. Oops, see, I got out of line. Something that you do not want to do. Clean it up quickly if you do. Not too worried about it on the collar there because we're going to be painting over that. Okay, on her belt here, let's add a little highlight of gray sky along the back there. And then we're going to add a little bit on this top shoe. Need a little bit more water. Maybe down the heel. Just a little bit of, we don't want too much on there because, oops, that's almost too much there. I'm going to go back into my black. I think I might blend my gray sky and my black so it won't be quite so bright. just a little bit. We don't need a whole lot on there. Okay, let's work on our hair. So we're going to take a liner brush or a round brush, whichever you prefer to do. We're going to take some uh, antique gold and we're just going to start creating some curls and swirls kind of thing in our hair. I want it to kind of flip up on the edges here. And 
This is just antique gold. Okay, so not we're not giving a whole lot of detail. Okay, our next color. I've got a, some raw sienna out here, and we might just add just a few strokes of that in here. Not too many. Okay, then we're going to go into some cat yellow. I'm going to start adding some brighter strokes in here. Because cad yellow is a transparent color, we can go right over uh, the colors that we've already put on here. Yeah, we'll cover them up. Okay, let's put some snow white strokes in here. Just a few of those. Okay, so now we're going to mix uh, equal mixes of antique gold and burnt sienna, or raw sienna. And we're going to go along the bottom of her hair here. And we'll go up along the back. And we can create some little more definition in her hair here. We'll take care of her hair. I think it looks pretty good. One more place I might shade that mix. Mix a little more here. It's right here because this is her bangs are kind of flipped up. You know, the, that's the way they had the style back then. Back in the day. Give it some weight in the front here. Maybe not take that all the way to the top, just a little bit there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for her hair. I think I'm going to shade around her face again with that warm beige. Just a tiny bit. Might add the teeny tiniest little dot of raw sienna in with it. Just to darken it up. Just want to keep it right there next to her hair. Okay, that sets her sets her back there really nicely. All right, let's work on the fur on her dress. 
Next, okay, we're going to work on her cuffs and her collar. So we're going to start with warm white. And so we need that and some snow white out. Now I'm just using a um, domed brush. This one is not very stiff. It's kind of soft. And I want that because I want to give my fur a little bit of soft look. This is a Royal Majestic number no. 6, I believe. I got this at Hobby Lobby. So we're going to start with a dry brush. I'm going to tap in to my warm white right here. And then kind of offload it here on my palette, kind of working it into the bristles, but not very far into the bristles. Okay, I always touch my paper towel before I go to my surface. And I'm just going to start tapping this on. I have my brush straight up and down. And come right over onto the dress, it's fine. Don't want any hard edges here. So I'm going to try and cover up that red as best I can. I'm loading and unloading the same way. I need a little bit more up here on this. Don't get in a hurry with this. You, you need to have a smaller dome brush. This one is a size 6, but I could actually go to a smaller one. So I'm going to do cuffs. one really big, so I might want to make this one a little bit bigger. I'm going to go up here and put a little bit more on color. This is still just warm white. I'm going to wipe my brush off because I don't want to um, get it wet. So I'm just going to remove as much of the paint off of it as I can. And I'm going to pick up some Snow White the same way. So I'm going to load it and then I'm going to tap onto my palette and work it in. And then I'll put some Snow White on here. Brighten it up. Shape this one better. And we'll repeat with the Snow White. I want to let this dry really good. And we'll repeat and then um, we'll come back and do a little bit of shading on there. So I'm going to wash this out because it's going to be a little while before that gets dry so I know the brush will have time to dry before I can shade on it. Okay, I'm taking my blue mist and very gently I'm shading 
with just a pity pat kind of float here. I don't, I don't want it very dark. I just want a little bit of subtle stuff here. And I think we'll shade back here. Just a pity pat. That's good on the fur. I don't want to do any more than that. I'll wide angle out so you can see her a little bit better. I really want her to, to be the focal point. Um, I think I'm going to go back in here though and shade around my ornaments. They just kind of look like they're floating in air there. So I'm going to get a little bit of the black forest green. Just go around some of our ornaments on the lower side of them. That's going to make them look like they're lifted off of the tree a little bit. That's what I need to widen. Okay, that looks much better, so I'm going to go and finish the other ones. Okay, I'm adding a little highlight on my bolts here, right on top of the liquid glass. Snow white, warm white, whatever white you have. those ornaments quite a bit or those bulbs all right we're ready to move over to our presence over here now this ball here um, I'm just gonna put some stars on it some little stars I'll just put three on it so I think I'll paint those in with, I think I'll paint them blue. Let's go with sapphire blue on there. This is a very small ball. You don't have to be so super detailed about it. And I do want to put a couple of coats. So I just made like an A there. And then I'm just going to go across here. And fill that in. Okay. Oh, it's just... I'm going to put a second coat on, on that. Um, I think the lady is completely done, so we're not going to 
do any more on her. So on the bag here, I want to put some stripes. Let me get a little bit of Santa red out. So I just want to put a few stripes on here. You can put your pattern lines on here and do this. these. Widen this one here a little bit. Straighten it up there. Yeah, a little bit of a curve to it. Probably not getting them quite as straight as I would like. So on the side of the bag over here, I'm not really sure how the stripes would go over there. So I'm going to have to think about that for a second. I'll get my second coat on my little on my ball here. On my little stars. I'm up on the tippy toe of this round brush. Let's shade on our ball here with blue mist. And then we can give a little highlight with snow white. I won't see too much of the Snow White. I'm going to deepen the blue mist. Okay, that finishes up the ball for us. Okay, before I finish the bag, I want to get the presents done, especially the ones that are in it. So we're going to shade with some uh, raw sienna. So I'm going to shade along this edge and along the bottom here. And we're going to also shade with raw sienna on this present. So we're going to go this edge and around the ball. And we'll go along this edge and down here. edge. 
a real red present. Very light touch there. Don't get uh, crazy. Okay. I'm going to highlight on this one with moon yellow. And the other one with cad yellow. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, actually, I might use warm white on that. I already have some out. So let's go with moon yellow on here. So we'll highlight up this edge. This one we're going to go with some warm white. I still have that yellow on my brush. I did not clean it out, so it can be a dirty, dirty mix there. This one I want to keep more on the yellow side, so I'm going to glaze over it with some uh, cat yellow. I'm going to repeat my highlight and my shading on this one. So some cad yellow. We're going to create a wash like we did with that cherry red. So it's mostly water. You want to use some clean water here because you don't want to use your dirty water. It will tint your it will tint your water um, with whatever's in your dirty water. So I'm just going to glaze over this with some cad yellow. lot of water there. Okay, for the green one, um, this green one we're going to use uh, forest green, or not forest green, festive green to shade with. So we'll beside this one and along the bottom here. Not a very big present, so don't let your float get too carried away there. We'll come back and darken that. And this one we're going to use the black forest green. So we'll go along next to this present. And next to this one here. Go on the bottom. And go along this edge. It's kind of under, kind of hidden underneath the bag a little bit. And I think we'll go along here. Go back up to my festive green on this one. And then we'll highlight this one with some warm white or snow white, whatever you have on your palette. green one, we'll do the green tea. So we'll go along here, and along here. And on this top edge. 
much here. Just a touch up there, not very much, because that's really kind of underneath that. Underneath. I'm going to highlight on that one one more time with the warm white. Okay, let's work on shading the red one here. Um, I think we'll do Rookwood Red for shading. And we might want to darken that just a little bit with some either soft black or lap black. Either one will darken. So let's do two Rookwood Reds to one soft black. So we're going to shade down here. I think I'm going to go with lamp black. So we'll use even less of the lamp black than we would the soft black. Oops. Turned on the wrong side. So teeny tiniest little dot of black and some of the Rookwood Red. That made it quite a, a richer color there. I like that much better. Just mix it on your brush. If you feel like when you're mixing it, it's got too much black, pick up a little bit more red. Go along this edge a little bit. Not all the way, just part way. Some. I might want to go along this edge here, this lower edge, just a little bit. It's mostly in the shadow. So let's highlight. Um, let's see. Let's use the cad cadmium orange. of this one will be highlighted. Right here. Let me put just a little bit right there. I need a little bit of darkness along this edge to define it. brighten on that red one. Let's go with a little bit of orange. Let's go orange and just a tiny touch of white. I just want to brighten this up a little bit. Feather touch here. I'm just kind of letting the brush kind of glide over it and leave just a tiny bit of paint on there. Okay, let's get the bows done on these gifts. This bow is going to be Rookwood Red. We're not going to add a lot of detail to our bows. So just a 
just base it in a couple of coats. That's that one. This one back here I think will make a little stringy bow. And I think we'll make it green tea. So just thin some down with your liner brush like we did up here on this one. And we're just going to add it on here like this. bow like that. Nothing spectacular. Now this one here we're going to make a, a warm white bow. Get some fresh warm white out. come back and shade this edge over here. Oops. So, let me see if I can remove that little boo-boo there. Just not let it go too long. Well, goodness gracious, definitely need more paint and water in my brush here. It shouldn't be dragging like that. So I've got that bow really, or that ribbon really fat, so let me fatten this one up. a big bow in the middle of this one. Okay, we'll come back and repeat all of that. I'll go ahead and repeat the Rookwood one. That way it can get drying and we can add some detail on it. When we shade this one, we'll go and shade that one a little bit over the, the bow. This little ribbon down here, I'll just add a little highlight on it. Just a tiny bit. Okay, the bag, I want to shade the bag with the washiest floats of Rickwood Red. So, how you get a nice washy float is you get a little bit of paint on your brush and you just continue to work it into your brush till it's almost sheer on your palette. See that? I've worked it so much into my brush that it's very, very sheer. Okay. Down the 
this inside and I just added some some small lines in there I didn't I didn't get too detailed with that because it's the side of the bag so I'm not gonna worry too much about it and I'm gonna go down this side okay so that's where we're gonna shade the bag at and we can highlight it with some snow white or warm white whichever one Just a touch back there. My second coat of white on here, and then we can finish up these presents. Okay, let that dry, and then we'll shade those two. We'll shade those two at the same time. Um, let's add a string on the bag. We'll just take some soft black and thin it down, inky consistency, with our liner brush. It's coming up from behind her hand here. Into the bag. And over here. And into the bag. Okay, almost looks like it has two handles there, so we can just go ahead and make it two handles. This one can disappear back there. And this one back there. So the bag has two handles on it. I'm going to brighten the very edge of this, just some snow white. And we'll put a little bit of snow white on the handle. I'm going to repeat the rookwood shading on the bag. Again, work it into your brush until it's very soft and sheer. Okay, so on this bow right here, we can make some folds here. Okay, that's the um, bow. I'm going to go to my angle brush with this one because those are some tight places. So we're going to take our Rookwood Red and mix it with a little bit of black like we did for over here. Just gives it a little bit of a richer red color. edges kind of up on the toe of this little brush and let's do next to the red so that little piece of ribbon is going to be mostly dark and I'm going to take just the rookwood red well I'll still add a tiny tiny bit of black to it I want to shade over that ribbon on that present a little bit. I'd probably like to be on camera. Okay, for the highlight on the uh, red one, just take some of that 
fiery red or tangelo orange, whichever you prefer. the white in there. Okay, that finishes off that one. Except I feel like the uh, present itself needs a a little bit more of a highlight. Okay, so for the red or the white bow, we're going to use the um, blue mist. And work it into my brush so it won't be quite so dark. And we're going to kind of do it like we did. That one up there. Go around the outer edges here. And a little bit under here. And here. And here. And here. Just a touch darker inside here. So we can't really highlight on this because it's a, a light color. I'll try and put some white on here because we did paint it warm white. So maybe we can get a little brightness on here. But not too much. Okay, now these two presents up here, I had drawn some ribbon on there. So we can add some ribbon if you want on those, or we can just leave them like they are because the corner is just peeking out. So I think I'll just leave them like that. So we need to go up and finish our topper here. Okay, I've got a little bit of washy soft black like I showed you how to do that brickwood red you work it into your brush till it's really soft and I just want to touch up I just want to add a little bit of this into the frame just feel like it needs a little bit in here Just a little bit here and there. Now we're going to go up here to the topper. And we're going to continue with this very soft black. I want to put grooves in the topper by just floating each one of these. Now I'm going to jump over to this one to give that one time to dry. I'm going to jump around here so that I can make sure that... Um, the previous one has had time to dry. So the old ornaments that I remember, they had all these little groove things in the top of them. So that's what I am creating here. So now I want to take some Snow White Actually, I think before I do the Snow White, I want to repeat that black on a couple of them. I want it to be just a scooch darker, but I'm still going to work that black into my brush to get it that nice sheer. That's a little bit too much paint, so just wipe some of that off. 
I really have the smallest amount of paint that you can imagine on my brush and it is concentrated on the toe of my brush but I've worked it into my brush so much that I have that soft soft effect that I get so I can I can line a nice line without it you know being harsh okay now we'll go with our white and we'll add this on the opposite side See, the first one I, I did is already fading kind of back down in there. Let's get this edge. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to let that dry. While it's drying, I'm going to shade underneath it. So the base color is um, gray sky or blue mist. And I'm going to add a little tiny bit of soft black in there with it. Darken it up. on our topper there. Okay, I want to highlight all along the bottom edge. And I'm going to deepen up underneath there, but I need to let it dry. So we're going to highlight on these curved edges there. That's probably dry underneath there, so I'm going to repeat. That's blue mist and soft black. So we really want it dark underneath here. Use the water edge and help pull out the paint. Pull it from where you painted it and that will help it soften out and not be a harsh harsh line. I still feel like it needs to be darker underneath there. So I'm going to get a little bit more of the soft black and just mix it into what I already have on my brush. Okay, that looks, that looks much better. Let's go back with another highlight of the white, snow white, on here. Okay, that's looking good there. Alright, I want to take the snow white along the top. down a little bit and then I think the outer edges I'm going to do a very sheer uh, matte black so work it into your brush and we'll get this some roundness here that's almost too dark
looks pretty good. Now we need to shade underneath our presents and stuff. We're going to get some deep midnight blue out. I think I might use a tiny bit of this deep midnight blue up here. Underneath are our presents. Or around them, I guess I should say. This is Deep Midnight Blue. It's a float. So that kind of sets the presence. So now we got to do the same thing for her. So deep midnight blue. I'm going to go underneath her. shear this down for this one. A little bit of a shadow coming from her dress. Take the water edge and kind of smooth it out and blend it out. Okay, I think I'm going to take my liner brush here. I want to put some other colors in this tree. First thing I'm going to put in is some deep midnight blue. So thin this paint down to inky consistency. We're going to put this color in and a little bit of uh, blue mist. some of this color. Just put it in between things. Don't don't stress out about this. This is just a few little strokes. So let's get some blue mist. That's funny. Just a few strokes in there. Okay. So our last thing to do here, actually I'm going to um, my line doesn't quite look straight back here. So I'm going to straighten it up a bit. Blue mist back here. out so we can look at it. It looks a little bit better. I think we had some some white or some something mixed in with it to make it a little bit lighter. Okay, I think I'm gonna 
add a shadow around our um, picture here. Blue mist and a tiny little bit of deep midnight blue. bit of a shadow around that. Hmm. I think I'll go up the other side as well. Working into your brush so it's sheer. Okay, that looks like the picture stands off of the wall a little bit. You know how the old pictures hung with the with the um, wire, and they never fit flush against the wall ever. So I think that helps that quite a bit. Alright, all we need to do is shade around the outside of our ornament. Okay, we're going to shade around the whole, ends, uh, whole outside edge of this with deep midnight blue. So I've got a much larger brush now. I've got a half inch flat brush. I'm still going to make sure I've got water in my brush and I'm softening that down. I would much rather come back and repeat this as to make it too dark and not be happy with it. So this is definitely where I want to use my mop brush. And mop in that water edge. I will come back and repeat that because that's not near dark enough for me, but I prefer to start out softer. I'm going to try and stay off of my my star there because I don't really want it to turn blue. All the way down here. Okay, so that just gave it a very soft float. I can't even tell over here that I put any on. It was so sheer. I need that to come out farther into the ornament. So I'm going to repeat it. I want clean water in my brush. Really load it up. And I'm going to lay my brush flat. that topper and then I'm going to mop. I'm just going to barely mop over here on the edge because it's a little choppy and I don't want it to be choppy. But you have to be careful because you'll remove the paint if you get too much on there. start on the side of the star. I'll come back and do that top section here in a minute. Okay, mop that very gently in that water edge. Wipe it off and then just the softest 
of pressure in the paint area just to gently blend it. A bit more water here. Just to the star there. shadow line here, probably because my water edge in my brush wasn't completely clean. Okay, I think that's going to finish this ornament. I think it looks awesome. I was really going for the old, old Christmas card kind of look. So um, I think I got that effect pretty darn good. I feel like her leg needs to be separated just a touch more. So let me get a small brush here. I'm going to take a tiny little bit of raw sienna and see if I can't separate that a little bit more. I want to make it cohesive, so I'm putting it everywhere that I put the shading before, so I can make it cohesive. A little bit here. Back here. And put... There's hardly, I mean, I can't even begin to tell you the small amount of paint that is on my brush. Okay. I think I'm going to, well, I'm going to add a final little highlight on the topper here. I'm just going to get some white. Still have any on my palette here. Put it across the top here. I think that will do it for me. What a fun project. I hope that you enjoyed painting it as much as I enjoyed creating this. I just um, love old time cards and this one reminds me of it. So I thank you for painting with me and I'll see you guys on the next one.